Hello, God bless you. Happy New Year. It's January 3rd, 2021. This will be my first upload of the year. Uh, I plan on doing a lot more videos for this YouTube channel this year. A lot, a lot of things overall. I have uh, big plans this year. I know God has uh, not just a lot for me, but he has a lot for everyone this year, regardless of what um, is in store for the world. 2020 was... Um, not a normal year for our country, this world, but um, no matter what is in store for this country and this world in 2021, I know that God has huge plans for all of his children, um, and uh, I look forward. I look forward to this year. Um, tonight, I want to share um, from Matthew. I've been um, I've been reading Matthew uh to start off this year, studying Matthew, uh, I want to go through. You know, it, it is hard. I never know where to start because it's like I want to. It's like I want to start here. I want to start there, and it's like I finally end up picking a a place in the Bible to uh, to start. But you know, it's it's kind of difficult because I was I want to start everywhere, but you can't. Um, so I decided to start in Matthew again, and I've just been studying Matthew, and I wanted to go over some things that I've I've noticed. And it stood out to me. Um, I, so far, I'm, I'm through the first ten chapters of Matthew again, and um, but I want to I want to go over some things that I noticed in the first two chapters that just stood out to me. Now, Matthew, um, everybody knows it, it's kind of got like a bad rap at the beginning because it starts off with genealogy, the genealogy of Jesus Christ, and People, a lot of people get bored with that, and uh, but it's really only like the first um, sixteen verses, you know, Matthew chapter one, the first sixteen verses, it goes over the genealogy of Jesus Christ, and it can be kind of boring to some people, but it's very important. Um, but it's not even as bad as it's made out to be. It's not. It's not that. It's not even that long. Um, it's just sixteen verses, and then uh, in verse, uh, I'm sorry, seventeen verses, and then in verse eighteen. It goes to the the the, the birth of Jesus Christ, and um, we just passed Christmas, and this isn't like a Christmas message or anything like that. But um, reading the first two chapters of Matthew, I noticed some things that I just want to point out, and because uh, it stood out to me about obedience, I was noticing as I was reading, I, I was really noticing, and I felt God uh, showing me about obedience in these first two chapters and I want to point out what um what stood out to me and why I why I felt like uh you know God was talking to me about obedience. Let me turn my light around. I think I need glasses. It's just not as easy for me to to read anymore. Um so I'm gonna be starting in Matthew chapter one verse eighteen and uh this is the birth of Jesus Christ. Like I said it's not a Christmas message but you, you'll see where I'm going with this. It says, verse 18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, so she's um, she's promised to, to Joseph, um, they're engaged, that's his fiance. before they came together, she was found to be with child. So before they were together physically, she is found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Um, so they're engaged and she's found to be pregnant before they had been together physically. Now, you look at that, you look at that, you know, in today's world, automatically, what do you think? Well, obviously they've, they've been together or, you know, but it says here, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, and her husband, Joseph, being a just man, so he's a good man, and unwilling to put her to shame, he didn't want to shame her, he resolved to divorce her quietly. So imagine as a man, you're engaged to your fiance, and you find out she's pregnant, and you know you have not been together yet. Now, you know, automatically, you know, the assumptions, you know, everybody knows what we're, what we're all thinking. Well, it says here, from the Holy Spirit, in verse 18, it goes, Before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. But Joseph didn't know this yet. 
Okay, he didn't know this yet. Verse 19, And her husband Joseph, being a just man, meaning he's a good man, and unwilling to put her to shame, he doesn't want to shame her, he doesn't want to embarrass her, he resolves, he decides to divorce her quietly. So he's going to just divorce her quietly, not make a big scene. He doesn't want to shame her because he's a good man. And obviously he loves her. Verse 20, But as he considered these things, as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So now the angel is telling him, do not, do not worry that she's pregnant and you haven't been together yet because she hasn't been with anyone else. This is of the Holy Spirit. And he's being told this in a dream. Verse 21, she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Verse 23, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. So all this is taking place to fulfill this prophecy. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Verse 24, when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. So that's chapter one. What stood out to me was he's considering these things in his mind, like, okay, we're, you know, she's pregnant. I know it's not mine. And, you know, I'm just going to divorce her quietly. I'm not going to shame her. So he's, he's, he's thinking, you know, in reality, like what, what, what he sees, but he doesn't know what's going on yet. Then an angel comes and in a dream tells him everything is going on. You know, don't worry. She hasn't been with anyone else, you know. And what really stood out to me was it says, when, when Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him to. He didn't question. He didn't doubt. He didn't argue. He didn't. He, didn't, he just did what he was told. It's very clear. It says, verse 24, when Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife. He married her. And still did not, he says, verse 25, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. So he still was not with her physically until she had given birth and they were married. So he, you know, he, he did exactly as he was told. No questions. No questions about it. So that really stood out to me. That was the, the first thing that stood out to me. I was like, wow, he was obedient. And how often are we, do we question God? Do we, do we doubt God and his plan? And we wrestle with God and we, we don't listen. We're just, you know naturally it's just so easy to be disobedient then we go to chapter two and now the wise men now the wise men come into the story verse one chapter two now after jesus was born in bethlehem of judea in the days of herod the king behold wise men from the east came to jerusalem saying where is he who has been born king of the jews for we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was born. Verse five. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler. Who will shepherd my people Israel. Verse 7. Then Herod summoned the wise men. Secretly. And ascertained from them. What time the star had appeared. So he called a secret. Like a meeting in his chambers. With the wise men. And he wanted to know. When did this star appear? Uh, verse 8. And he sent. And he sent them to Bethlehem. Saying. Go and search diligently for the child. Go and find the child. And when you have found him, bring me word. Tell me where the child is, that I too may come and worship him. 
After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. Verse 10, when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with joy, with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream, so now the wise men are having a dream, and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Remember, Herod called this secret, you know, meeting in his chamber with the wise men. Oh, when did this star appear? Okay, go find him. Go find the child. Remember, he was troubled. Why? Because this is another king, the king, the king of the Jews. So he, he's feeling threatened. He's like, okay, go find him. And once you find him, let me come back and let me know. Let me know where he is so I can, you know, go and, you know, uh, you know, honor this child. But he has bad intentions. So, and verse 12, and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod. So they have a dream now, just like Joseph did. Don't go back that way. Don't tell Herod. They departed to their own country another way. So here we see obedience again. You don't. It doesn't say anything about questions. It doesn't say anything about doubting. Uh, you know, it just says, and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. So they just did what they were told. They obeyed. They obeyed and went home another way. They may have been, you know, a longer journey, but they obeyed and they went home another way. Now we pick up in verse 13. So that's the second, that's the second um, obedience, the second uh, part of obedience that stood out to me in reading these first two chapters. Verse 13, the flight to Egypt. Now, when they, the white, the wise men had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream again and said, rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt remain and remain there until I tell you for Herod is about to search for the child and destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet out of Egypt I called my son. So, once again, we see an act of obedience. Now, when they had departed, verse 13, when they had departed, the wise men, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise and take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet out of Egypt. I called my son. Then we go to verse 16. So that was number three, the third act of obedience. Going to Egypt. Then Herod, verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men. Now, it, it, it talked about Herod being dead. He's not dead yet. He said, go, stay there until I tell you. And basically wait uh, and remain there until the death of Herod. Now, verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all male children in Bethlehem. So he didn't want to take no chances. He had all the male children killed in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or younger, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Verse 17, then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A lot, of, a lot of prophecies are being fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. Verse 19, the return to Nazareth. But when Herod died, behold, now Herod's dead. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream again to Joseph. In Egypt, he's still in Egypt, waiting, saying, Rise and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. So here we see Joseph obeying again, not asking questions. Verse 22, But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, so Herod's son, Archelaus, is now um, in charge, 
he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth. So that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. So we see four or five acts of obedience there, mainly by Joseph and then the, and the wise men also. You know, Joseph is being told, do this, do that, do this, do that, and he does everything. We don't see any, we don't see any questions, we don't see any doubts, we don't see Anything like that. We just see him being told to do something and him doing it. And too many times in our in our life, in our walk with, with Christ, we ask too many questions. God tells us to do things and, and we we sit around thinking about it. Like, well, is that a good idea, God? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if I agree with that. And we see in these first two chapters, it just really stuck out to me how obedient Joseph and the wise men were. They did exactly what they were told, when they were told, and how they were told. And that's how we need to be. We need to just do what God tells us to do. That way things go a lot smoother in our, in our lives. You know, the reason why things don't go, so, don't go smooth in our life is because we don't do what we're told. You know, we think we have it all figured out. We think we know what's best. And clearly, like I always say at the ranch, if, if, if we knew what was best, you know, if, if we could do it on our own, we would have by now. And we wouldn't be in, in all the messes that we're, that we're in that we've created for ourselves. And one more, one more story that, that stuck out to me so far in Matthew uh, was I believe in Matthew 9 um, and this is where Matthew is called and Jesus calls Matthew and I was just uh, I don't know if anybody out there has watched that that show um, The Chosen um, it took me a, a while to get through season one I don't know why I just I get into you know seasons of procrastination um, and but I finally got through the season and I, and I loved it and I, I especially loved this scene in um in the chosen season one, I think it was episode seven, um, and it's where Jesus calls Matthew, and uh, it says, verse nine, Matthew nine, chapter nine, and it says, Matthew chapter nine, verse nine. I'm getting weird again. Matthew chapter nine, verse nine. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. He was a tax collector, and he said to him, "Follow me." And he rose and followed him. Very like simple. He just sim Jesus just simply says, "Follow me." And the very next lines are, "And he rose and followed him." He didn't think about it. He didn't delay. He didn't. He didn't. Um, well, let me talk. You know, let, let me let me pray about it. Let me pray about this, Jesus. I don't know if I should if, if I should follow you. I don't know if this is the will of God. You know. And I especially loved this this scene in the chosen because. The actor who portrays um, Matthew, he's a very odd, odd uh, person. I don't know if, if that's just him, the way he's acting or if that's really his, his mannerisms. He's just a very odd person. If you've seen the show, you, you would know what I'm talking about. And he's already in, in the show, he's already intrigued by Jesus. He's already intrigued. He's seen things um, from afar and he's already intrigued by Jesus. And Jesus walks through, turns, sees him in the, in the tax booth and he just simply says, follow me. And he just, it was like he, he was just waiting for, for Jesus to, um, to call him and say, follow me. He didn't question. He didn't delay. He didn't hesitate. He didn't, he didn't, I mean, none of that. I mean, and you see it here in the scripture, verse 9, Matthew 9, verse 9. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. Okay, <laughs> you know, and that's how we need to be. We just need, you know, Jesus saying, follow me. We just need to follow him. And we stop with the questions. Stop with the doubt. Stop with the, uh, well, you know, let me pray about this, Jesus. Can you imagine if, 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 uh, if Matthew would have been like, well, you know what? Let me pray about this, Jesus, and see if this is what God wants. You know, <laughs> should I follow you? That's just that's just me thinking, you know, out loud. That's just, that's just funny to me. But I really enjoyed that scene um, because... I felt the actor really did a really good job of. Um, I was laughing. I was just, in, you know, I was laughing like, well, the way he, the way he dropped his, the whole okay. And in, in the show, you know, he he's got everything. You know, he's he's taken care of. You know, and he's wealthy. 
I mean, no one likes him because he's a tax collector, but he's taken care of and he drops it all without hesitation, without delay, and just says, okay. Like he was like he was just waiting for Jesus to say, follow me, and he did. So that's what that's what stood out to me. Reading the, the first two chapters of Matthew, um, you know, Matt, I, I'll be done studying with Matthew probably in a couple of days. Um, I'm, I'm through the first 10 chapters again right now. I mean, I've read it before, but, you know, this year I want to, um, we never stop reading the Bible. You know, you don't, you don't read the Bible once or twice and go, okay, I'm good. You know, you, you continue, you, you're always learning new things. Um, so this year I plan on, you know, going through the Bible, you know, even more than I have in the past and, uh, um, you know, and not just reading it, but actually, you know, in-depth studying. So that's what, that's what, um, I got out of the first two chapters of Matthew on obedience. And, um, I just wanted to share that with, with any, anyone out there who, who comes across this video, um, about, you know, how, how we should be obedient. You know, that's what stood out to me. Um, read through those first two chapters and, uh, of Matthew and, uh, you know, let God, let God speak to you, you know, and, uh, that's what I got out of it. Out of, out of, um, I felt God just highlighting to me, like, do you see the obedience here, Sam? Joseph, mainly, and then the the one instance of the wise men, you know, that at the beginning of chapter two, where there was no, there was no questioning, there was no, none of that. They just did what they were told, you know. And when we do what God tells us, and trust His plan, and just go with it. We'll see how things are runs much more smoothly in our life. Not perfect. I mean, we're still going to have issues. We're still going to have str you know struggles and all that stuff. Life isn't meant to be easy, but you're going to see how much smoother your life will go when you let God lead you and you stop and we stop questioning Him, you know, at every turn and thinking we know best. So, God bless you. I hope I hope that ministers to you uh, the way it ministered to me. Uh, once again, Happy New Year. I plan on doing a lot more of these this year. Um, God bless you. Have a great day.